Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, uh, maybe a month. Uh, I started working, so uh, I, I kind of neglected the, the Hibusa here and the other project as well. Uh, but we did, to kind of recap what, what's going on here, uh, about two months ago, I uh, fixed the original engine that was in it, put a new head on it, uh, replaced the clutch, and installed it only to find out the transmission was locked up. It, it wouldn't go in any gear except for neutral. And when you put it in any of the six gears, it would just lock up and bang, bang, back and forth. It would move maybe uh, six inches to a foot in either direction, and then that was it. The engine was just running, but the clutch was doing nothing. It wasn't engaging uh, any of the gears. Uh, it would go into the gears, but it wouldn't um, produce the power output to those gears so something happened to that original engine we haven't gotten into that one yet so I did pick up a 07 engine about four or five hours away from here that had a output shaft sheared off so I opened it up replaced the output shaft ended up replacing a, a damaged fork and uh, while I was in there, I just replaced the main bearing. So now we have it all in. Um, I got it running, but it was running like crap. Um, it was just dumping fuel, and I didn't know what was going on. I actually uh, did a compression check, and I was getting 175 PSI all across the board. So the engine uh, is actually good. I swapped out the cam position sensor with the old engine. Same problem. Um, I, I would start it for you, uh, but the amount of fuel it's dumping in, into the engine, I don't want to damage it, I don't want to hydro lock the engine. But while I was doing it, I did notice the RPM gauge was reading double to triple the amount of RPM the actual engine had. So um, I looked at the stator in the sensor, the, uh, I don't know, pickup sensor, uh, crank sensor whatever you want to call it as you can see right here I removed it I was waiting for a tool for one week to remove the flywheel uh, because of course out of all the flywheel uh, pullers I have I didn't have the one I needed for this Hibusa so I pulled the flywheel off and this is what I found the original 03 Hibusa or Gen 1 has this flywheel it has uh, eight eight notches on it so the sensor crank sensor is picking up those eight notches and that's how it adjusts the timing and the actual uh, firing order and uh, the pulse width of the injector firing well not the pulse width but the actual injector firing uh, for the cylinder sorry so this is the one that was on the 03 engine that uh, I got to pull apart for, with the damaged uh, or an unknown issue with the trans. The 07 motor I picked up um, has this one. Uh, I, I thought Gen 1 was you know, 07 and it still is, but I, get, I looked it up on eBay and I looked up 07 uh, Busa engines and all of them had this updated gen 2 gen 3 flywheel you could see with all the um, trigger points so this one has eight trigger points i don't know if you could see this this one only has eight trigger points this one has a bunch so it's more defined more accurate on the gen 2 gen 3 and i guess on 07s they put this uh newer generation flywheel on the 07 model because it's not on the 06 and prior so keep a lookout for that if you want to purchase a, an 07 engine for your, you know, 99 to 06. Because um, I know for sure that's not a Gen 2 motor. Uh, it's definitely not bigger CC. And it, I, I think someone said the Gen 1 motors have the secondary air injection or the whatever those tubes are. I think it's secondary air injection. Whereas the Gen 2 and on don't have those, but don't quote me on that. I'm not a Hibusa specialist, but all I know is this was causing my problem. It was triggering the injectors and the spark 
multiple times uh, per uh, revolution so it was just dumping fuel so I bought a tool popped them both off and now I'm gonna put the correct one on this engine uh, on this 07 engine so hopefully we can get this thing to fire up and run like it's supposed to and not sputter and pop and blow uh, pretty much fuel out the tailpipe So since this is boring TV, uh, all I'm doing is putting this on, it's notched, and then I'm going to tighten the nut and put the cover back on and you'll, you'll see it all complete because it's a waste of 10 minutes of uh, running time here and, and nobody, nobody cares. Alright, it's all back together, uh, I put the, the replacement flywheel from the original 03 engine, covers on, I uh, topped off the oil. Let's uh, see if this works. Might have to put a battery charger on it. It's been sitting for a while. Yeah, of course. All right, take two. out of gear it runs pretty good now I'm just gonna let it sit here and idle to make sure it gets up to temp the fan clicks on and then it cools itself off and then once that happens a couple times then I'm gonna drain the water out of the uh, radiator system or cooling system and then replace it with uh, coolant and then we'll put this thing all back together uh, you know, this was a drag bike, so they removed the one rotor and caliper, and this thing does not stop. I mean, I don't, it's pretty sketchy if people are riding these on the street like that. So, I did pick up some parts to get that caliper and rotor back on that's missing, and um, I bought some rear sets so I can get um, an exhaust can on there. I did weld up. Uh, the left side, the left side exhaust. If you can see the hole there, I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna put an O2 sensor bung in there, so I can get accurate O2 readings, and this way, um, 
get rid of that left side muffler because all I have is is an OEM muffler so I don't feel like spending any more money I already got way too much money into this bike and it still needs plastics etc so we'll get it all back together and then uh, we'll see if I can sell it uh, looks like the Biggie. Still waiting for the fan to kick on. It's uh, right at the middle of operating temperature. The fan just turned on and now it, it just shut off. Temperature is holding steady in the middle. I'm going to wait till it heats up again and turns back on one more time and then we should be good to go. This is always a good idea to do this test before you uh, buy a motorcycle or sell a motorcycle. And that, ah uh, man, that stator is tripping real good. <laughs> I'll have to RTV the crap out of that thing. The gasket looks pretty new. So I'm just waiting for it to turn on one more time. There it is. Fan is turning on. Fan turned off. And that's it. So this bike is good to go mechanically. Anytime you purchase a motorcycle or sell a motorcycle, I mean, don't be a dirt bag. Uh, when you purchase a motorcycle You know you always want to ride it. You always want to make sure it sits there at idle and Gets up to operating temperature. You want to wait for that cooling fan to turn on and Then you watch the temperature drop that cooling fan should turn off and Then the temperature should uh, drop and then it'll rise again, etc. Fan will turn back on once it uh, drops down to a specific temperature the fan shuts off it's going to repeat that process especially at idle because that's when it's going to heat up the most there's not a lot there's no airflow going through the uh radiator so that's that's the first step to buying a motorcycle uh you definitely want to make sure it's not sitting there and it's going to overheat uh sitting at a light uh next step would be obviously you need to test ride it make sure it's uh mechanically sound and just because an engine runs uh you know especially on these sport bikes uh, doesn't mean it uh, shifts and, and rides. So you definitely want to go through all the gears and you want to get on, get on the bike a good quarter to a half throttle in each gear uh, to make sure that that gear does not pop out. Because a lot of times um, the gears work until you put them on load and then they pop out of gear. That's, that's the first sign of a, a failing transmission bad shift fork or bad dogs etc the rounded off dogs uh, in the in the transmission so uh, definitely do your homework before you buy a used bike because you don't want to be stuck with it you know when you buy a used bike car whatever it is the second you hand over the money and get the title it's yours there there is no buying back no, no one's gonna take it back you know on, on their good gesture it's yours and most state laws uh once money and titles exchanged you, you're buying it as is where is and you own it so you don't want to be stuck with any problems so we'll get this bike back together uh, i gotta put the air box back on it i'm gonna put the rear sets front brake rotor caliper and then get that factory exhaust in there uh, so this bike's going to be pretty quiet, and then I'll weld a uh, capable uh, O2 sensor bung on that left side here, on that header that I cut off and welded, uh, because, uh, you know, I didn't have the left side mid-pipe or the muffler, so I, I didn't want to go out and buy a factory, uh, you know, muffler just, uh, just to bolt that in you know 30 minutes with a welder uh i just cut that edge off and welded that side 
and I did look at the header. The header does flow four into the one, actually four into two, and it just splits both sides. So they're both open. I did check it before I welded it. <clears throat> it's not like the two cylinders are blocked off now. So uh, that's it. Uh, next step is going to be getting this all together and then getting into this 03 engine with some uh, issues with the transmission. So I hope, uh, I thank you guys for, you know, bearing with me. This has been a, a headache of a project. And, uh, you know, you know, now that work, my concrete business started up, uh, I haven't had as much time to, to work on. It's literally been sitting in the garage for uh, three weeks or four weeks. The last time I posted a video, I haven't really messed with it. Uh, within that month time, I, I put the engine in put all the accessories on it and literally this is the first time I started it where it actually ran last time I ran it uh, the, the flywheel was the wrong flywheel and it was just dumping fuel and I, I stopped doing anything because I didn't want to hydro lock it uh, but this is it I'll get another video for you guys after everything is done uh, once I put it all back together I am going to sell it like this uh, I just can't invest any more into plastics, and you know it, it has a pretty decent size uh, dent in the tank here and here. So I might just dump this for around forty-eight hundred dollars and see if I can get it. If I can't, then I'll use it for a, a turbo project. If I do sell it for forty-eight hundred, then I'm hoping to fix this engine and sell this engine for about 1500 to 2000 um, just to get some kind of profit out of this build because you know like i said i bought this damn thing for way too much you know because it was a drag bike and it was stripped missing pieces beat up abused um, so you know it is what it is i bought it it's mine i'm stuck with it for more money than it's worth so i gotta make the best of it and luckily I was able to get this engine for around $600 plus another three, 300 or so, 350 maybe in uh, parts to, to fix it. And you know, obviously the, the labor is me. So until next time, uh, please like and subscribe. We definitely have more videos coming and uh, I can finally get back onto that Superhawk Turbo project. Thanks, guys. See you next time.